today's date is July 8, 2013. And the uh, time is uh, 6 33 p.m. Derek Ciccolani? Here. Rick Charette? Present. Steve Michalski? Here. Jim Freeman? Here. Ron Collins? Here. Ed Kamel? Here. Rich Zacker? Here. Okay, we're missing no one. So, Dick, you're just going to become our encyclopedia, I guess. Tonight. If we, if we can, if we get lucky. Uh, announcements, correspondence, mail. I've got some, but some of it is work that has to be done, and I don't want to put it at this point in the meeting. Um, a little bit later, simply because Brad Williamson's coming at 7. We're going to get into the roads for a few minutes. I've got a road book here and get his input on the CIP. So uh, let's right now go to. Um, review and possible approval of minutes for June 10th. See anything in here? I think we might be missing an action item. I think you were going to call the lawyer to see what the quote would be to have her work the zoning for us. Yeah, Laura went away for a little while. I did call them, and I'm going to get to her this coming week. Um, <clears throat> she was gone for three days. Not a big deal, but then I just lost track of it. After the fourth, I never gave it any thought. So, thanks for the reminder. Um, you mean about we working in the zoning ordinance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. See what the price would be to have them do it for us. Yeah. We should note yeah. <clears throat> the action order. Pardon me. We should note that in the minutes. The action order. To contact the lawyer. We should note that. That was my point. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you just said. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, let's. Um, can you get that one, George? Yeah. He's making an amendment toward the end. Mr. Chairman, I withdraw my motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the minutes of June 10, 2013 as amended. Second. Anybody else see any anomalies or missing links? Okay. Um, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? They are now part of history in the global records. <clears throat> okay. We'll get into this while we're at it. This is one of the mail items. This is a DOT driveway permit copy that was sent to the town um, that has to do with logging on um, Governor's Road. It's a temporary logging permit, etc. Um, we don't give those permits out, but we are responsible, I guess. Um, I, I don't think we actually are responsible for enforcing anything on state roads. However, um, if we do, 
for some reason, and I would that would take a little research to see how tied we are up in that. It would be the selectman and the CEO. So this letter will stay. It was sent to the planning board. It will stay in the planning board slot in case the subject ever comes up and you guys are contacted about enforcement of something. You know where it is. This is the letter from the state of New Hampshire, DOT, notifying us of this permit on the state road. So. Are they going to walk? I don't know. Um, the address is here. Yeah, I'm sure you Do you have an idea of the scope of the uh, yeah. Select what you know. Well, <clears throat> it, it's just, there's no scope here. It's just the intent to cut. Tax map 12. I think it's uh, Bob Russo. Okay. Oh, it's starting already. Somebody's walking back there already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're doing a Bob Forrester scrutinized pruning. Okay, well. Sending out. Okay, well, anyway, that's it. Okay, OEP has sent us stuff. Here's where we're going to try to see what Dick's got up his sleeve. <clears throat> There's a bunch of questions that, that OEP wants answered, and some of them are going to require research if we don't have off-the-cuff answers. Um, first of all, I'm going to just start left to right. There's little boxes to be checked in. They want that information. Check if your regulations are available online. They are. So that we're going to check. Check if you're an SB2 municipality. <clears throat> check if you have a town march meeting. Check if you have a municipal sewer system. That stuff's the easy stuff. When was the planning board created? What year? 1962. 1962, that's in this town. That's what's recorded up at the county seat in Nossidy. On the wall, they have the dates of all planning boards for all the towns in the county. 62 is what's posted from Brookfield. That, so is that right? I don't know. But that's yeah, what's, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Historic district ordinance first adopted. I want to have a historic district, do we? When was our master plan first adopted? I pulled this out. If you look at master plan, it says the 1990 Brookfield master plan update. And this is the only one I've ever received. I don't know if that was been adopted or updated in 1990. And that's a typo. Do you have any idea? Look back uh, at who did the work? Is it LRPC? There was a master plan before that. LRPC did this. Okay. There was one 10 years prior to that. So let's call it 1980. As far as I know, that's the first master plan. I'm going to use that because I yeah. just think this is for the record. I have a copy of it, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 1980. And it was done mainly by citizens' committees. Okay, well, they don't ask who did it. They just ask when. Most recent master plan amendment, we've got that 5806. Okay, capital improvement program first adopted. We don't have one yet. I'm just going to write work in progress. If we're gonna, I've looked at so many of these things, and, and there's a lot of towns. Because capital improvements an OEP thing, requirement now. People are making these documents that are supposed to be capital improvement plan programs, and they're they're absolutely meaningless, and they have no value in information. There are a lot of verbiage that just says capital improvement 15 times or 25 times in eight pages, and that's what they're you know resting their heads on or laurels. So anyway, we're actually trying to do a real real one. Do they, are they asking when we've completed the first draft of it, or are they asking when we pass the when we're, our article? Our topic? first adoption of one. We don't have one. I'm just going to put okay. that. Well, we don't have one writing, but uh, they're asking for a document. No, we never had one. But there was a process whereby the Warren article was proposed. Yes, it, it directed the planning board 
to undertake right. a CIP, but right. we never, never did it. No, not yet. We're working right. on it. This is right. what we're at now. Could you repeat the question? Because I... When was the capital improvement program first adopted? Now, that doesn't state that we have an actual program in writing or a document set forth. Uh, we actually voted in for a capital improvement process, but not a document. Capital improvement. Uh, last year. But a CIP program is a program. Yeah, that, that means we're working on it. doesn't mean it has to be actually developed and in writing yet. That's what, that's what I'm wondering about the, the wording of the question. If we've actually adopted, we've started the process, or if we've actually produced a document stating what our plan is. I think it, it, this appears to me that inherent in the question is a capital improvement program, yeah. which is a program, not a request to make capital improvement. Yeah. Or, program. or an actually produced document. When was it actually produced? We don't have one. Well, we have we have started the process to. to well, we can tell them that. And we started that last year when we actually started the capital improvement program to bring this all out and start developing an actual plan. <clears throat> that actually started last year. We didn't really get a lot of work on it with all the other things we had to do, but we actually started it last year. You're so not going to get graded on it. No, I am. This is just information. Yep. That yeah. I'm just wondering as far as, far as office and man being, being accurate in the budget. They, it's a statistic. That's, that's all of this. Zoning board was created in 1962. That's redundant, huh? When was it? Maybe not. When was the zoning board created? Zoning well, board it would have to have been when there was zoning. So it would be 60. Well, the planning board was created in 62. I'm just going to Well, that's the zoning board. Yeah, they have to be then or thereafter. The ZBA and the planning, the planning board can actually be. I'm in a planning board meeting or a call back yeah, some other time. One of my customers, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like that. I'm going to say, get it. Oh, Jesus. They won't get up on that. Persistence. I hate you. How do they get you? I don't know. Love that stuff, oh, man. <coughs> oh. Check if the zoning board of adjustment is elected. No, it's it is not. It's appointed. They've got it down here. Now they've sent this to us checked. This is what they're assuming. They can check some of these things themselves and sent it to us. Well, it's not a uh, state mandate for it to be an elected position. No, it's not. It could be either one. Yes. Either one. I'm going to label that incorrect. Authorized number of ZBA alternates. Do you know how many there are? I think there's only one. What's the authorized number? Three. Authorized. There's only one right now, though, so that's what I'm not looking for how many we actually have. Groundwater protection and aquifer protection ordinance. Do we have that? Not really. No. You know of anything we have for groundwater protection ordinances? What's that area down on uh, Governor's Road down there that says water protection area? That's state. That's state. state, That's yeah. state. In other words, no salt. We don't have it. I couldn't find any ordinance that addressed that in our zoning. Unless you want to get into what our septic requirements are, but I don't think that has anything to do with that. Well, that's state mandate. You'd have to have the uh, you would have to have the <coughs> aquifers mapped out in order to do that. Have well, that done for yeah, everything's done everywhere by the government. But we don't have an ordinance that says if you're in this area, you can't do this. X, Y, and Z. We have a wetland buffer, though. We're well, not allowed to build within how many feet of the wetland buffer? Well, that's, that's a little bit of a state rule. Huh? That's determined by the state. It's the, it's the state uh, 75 feet. Yeah, it's 75 feet, but we don't have any superseding things here that I know of. Yeah. I'd have to ask Ed that. The Shoreland Protection Act, which was approved by the state, is what we operate under. Yeah, I don't know why they're asking. I think this, but towns can have their own wetlands ordinance. As such, I don't think we've ever approved of one. No. I have a draft of one, but I don't think we ever approved one. You know, but any subsidiary uh, board 
would have to at least meet state or, or the overseeing oh, yeah. uh, requirements. They right. have to meet at least state or federal requirements. But it's and easier it just to use the state. Yeah. yeah, we could be more stringent if we wanted to, but we can't be any less stringent right. than state requirements. Do we have a community services and care planning board? No. Who's asking these questions? OEP. OEP. We, we're obligated to send this back to them with information. You know, if they, we don't send this one back, we'll get another one in the mail and have to do it then. And if we don't do that one, we'll have to get it. No, there could also be penalties involved with this overspend. Yeah, well, I don't think they can penalize us money wise, but uh, they could not allow us to join the Grand Estate Futures Organization. Oh, damn. Property assessed clean energy, property soil based lot sizing. Nope. Outdoor wood fired. Hydronic heaters. No, we fall back to the state. Yep. Uh, Zoning ordinance, adult business regulations. Adult, it's not cool. adult. That's what it says. <laughs> adult business regulations. We don't regulate, is it just, just have it? We just have it. <laughs> Unofficial. Adult. I love the adult. Yeah. That's great, you know. Didn't Wolfboro have a zoning problem with the adult bookstore? Yeah. <laughs> so what they do, move it to Brookfield? <laughs> if anybody, I'm going to read what we're supposed to check off. Anybody thinks we've got this somewhere? Okay. Like this. You've got is all uh, non-profit. Okay. <laughs> zoning ordinance. Design review. Yes, we do that. Elderly housing regulations. No. Growth management? Yes, we got it. Elderly. Elderly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. Not workforce. We Elderly. 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 Workforce housing. Part of workforce housing. Growth management. We have, that's, we that's have that's to run zoning. on it. We have huh? to run on that side of zoning. We don't have anything specific. No, but I mean, I don't know what growth management means. Uh, it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, historic district ordinance, we don't have that. We have no inter impact fees, no inter interim GM. Growth management. Growth management. Outdoor wood heaters. No. Single zone. No. Tax. Increment finance districts, no. Telecommunications, they've gone and checked yes for us. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we do. do. We do. Towers. Towers. Yeah. 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 Transfer of development right, wetlands buffering, wetlands setbacks, wind turbine regulations, we have that. Innovative land use regulations from the Innovative Land Use Guide. I don't even know what that is. Does anybody here know what the Innovative Land Use Guide is? I think it's only mentions Innovative Land Use. I want to say in the rec zone. No, in the... Sounds like something from Vermont. Well, these are the things. Do we have access management regulations? No. Do we have agriculture incentive zoning? Yes. No, we don't have incentives. Well, no, that doesn't mean like tax breaks. Oh. No, we don't have tax breaks, but we allow close to grow stands now. <laughs> oh, that's that's a little different. That's that's fun. I know. Conservation, open space development, erosion sediment control during construction. I'm sure we do that. Ed, yeah, that's, that's Ed's thing. Energy efficient development. You know what? No, no government. Depends on how you look at this, also vague. Well, it was the, the international building codes. Yeah, IBC, that's right. Are you talking about the, any type of tax and Excuse me, Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Historic district ordinance. We don't have a historic district. Impact for you. I read that already. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Infill development, landscaping, lot size averaging. Pedestrian-oriented development, preserving dark skies, I like that one. Shoreland protection, steep slope ridge line protection regulations. We don't have that. Steep so, slopes we have. Huh? Steep slopes we have. That's in the subject. Oh, we talked about ridge line development too. Good.
Village Plan Alternative Subdivision, Wetlands Protection, Urban, other outside the state, uh, they want to, we have any particular exclusive ones to our zoning. Transit oriented development, you know, stormwater management, post construction. No, they're referring to retention ponds and the like for large projects. We don't do that. We haven't had any large projects. Although, we did have Fraggle Rock design one for, I mean, it was part of the engineering plan for, um, that's not required by our zoning. Okay, thank you all. Went right for regulation, huh? Well, uh, it's got to go back. I might as well get it done and back to, back to the business. Does it make you feel like we don't have, don't have enough regulation because you didn't get to check enough stuff? Is that what your concern is? <laughs> I'm a, I have no concern. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I know that's what the receiver's going to get out of it. How that. did you answer the wind, small wind energy system? I said yes. Yeah, okay. yeah that's fine. Because we do, and we that's regulate the, yeah. the tower. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, I'm going to hand that over to you. And Brad will be showing up any minute now. Lord, um, no business. We have no new business on tap for tonight, but we do have plenty of old business. Um, and CIP is, is where we are. You know, what have you guys done so far? I forget the dates you were going to... You're going to meet tonight at 7 o'clock to finalize. Tonight? Tonight. That's why they're here. Oh, oh, yeah. And then we're supposed to have it wrapped up for people to see the 16th of July when we meet with the various committees. See if right. Anything. Obviously, we're all... And then we're going to pick a date tonight for this to meet. And we're going to go through if it's going to be a phased in thing? Oh, our, our proposal is yes, it's phased in. The cover letter that we're trying to draft will say it's phased in. So, but that's what I was really hot on making everybody on the same page. If, if you're going to do phased in stuff, that we do it in the fashion that where it works. If it's not a bump out, mm -hmm. it's got to be phased. Financially, we have to face it. No, I understand, but, but... So we have to wait for the response, because if people say take it down and put a bump out, that's got to be a one shot. Yeah. After that, we can face it. Mm -hmm. There's two different ways to face it, right? One is you do half the project one year, half the project, or, you know, split it, right. split the work over the number of years. The other is just simply to raise the money over the number of years. We're trying to do it all at once. Right. Well, okay. I, I understand. I'm just saying that the, if, well, if, if, if we can't find a way to split the work, we can still phase it. Of course, but the only inefficient part of that is that what costs are today, they're not going to be in three years. So you've set a goal and you've made an amount of money available that may not work. So you're back to ground zero again because you don't have enough money to fund a project in three years when you phase it that way. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Um, but you, it's a crapshoot, so you probably should have some kind of padding in, incorporated into the whole thing if you're going to phase it money-wise. But if you, if you phase it accomplishment-wise, if you phase it construction-wise, then you have to pick, really put your head to work on how that's going to be so that you don't eliminate necessary infrastructure while you're waiting for the next town meeting. But you don't want to incur any exorbitant costs in doing a partial job that is going to cr create that cost problem later because you did a partial job. I mean, a contractor is only going to do so much of that. But anyway, so that's where you are. We're not, we're not going anywhere with the, that tonight because the process is moving and it's good. Townhouse, same thing. Jen. We got the, the fellow. Tell, tell everybody here. All right, thanks. Excuse me. I uh, had a chance to talk with John Cadwick uh, about having him come in and speak to the Historical Society Planning Board, our group session, trying to give us a little advice from the ground up, the experiences that he had with the uh, Milton Old Townhouse project uh, and how they accomplished the remarkable goals that they, that they accomplished with that project. 
and try to give us a little guideline and help us along the way where we're in the, uh, the starting motions of any repair we may wind up doing with the townhouse and school school house. He's more than happy to come down and speak with us, uh, give us whatever advice from his uh, well of knowledge, and help us along with his contacts to uh, get us any type of uh, grants or any type of uh, other help that we may need. And he'd be happy, happy to come down whenever we can. He's at a very open schedule. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to hearing from us and coming up and helping us out. We're going to have to get to the townhouse sooner or later because it's got problems. I don't know when, but I think putting too much on everybody's plate at once is counterproductive. I believe that. Especially when, like I said before, we're doing something very rarely done in communities, and that's actually putting the options out to a consensus vote in the general public to come up with a majority vote on what course of action we're going to take. It's very rare. Most city planners say these are our three courses of action. They have a hearing, they listen to the people and do what they darn well please anyway. It's always the way it is, just about everywhere. I know this is a unique situation. Absolutely. I know John would be happy to uh, help us uh, along with not only the, the achievements they made, but also the pitfalls he ran into. And help, help give, us, <coughs> give us guidance, and I'm sure he'd be more than happy to, to talk with us in the future as we go on through this process. I, I agree. It's going to be a long process. I, I think so, with the townhouse. Cause it's, got, it's got issues, and that's okay. probably where he, he, his stuff will come in because it's a historic building. Okay. Schoolhouse is not historic. It, it won't be called that again. And <clears throat> we've already got several options on the table, whichever one, if, any, if they pick none of them or one of them. I don't know that we want to start altering them at this point if we want to get anything done at all. Well, regardless of however we decide to, he'd be happy to give us his experience and help us along the way with any, you know, anything that uh, he can. He's a very generous guy with his time and his efforts, okay. and uh, he's a good resource. All right, well, when we get to that point, I got a pee thing going on here. Excuse me. There. Oh, no, I, I dislocated my knee last week. Oh. Um, excuse me. No. <clears throat> I don't think we can go any further on buildings tonight. Because they are where they are, and we're at where we're at. And Brad's going to show up here pretty shortly. I'm going to pass this around. Do you have a report on the June 18th meeting? We just, yes, the one where we all met here in the circle. Yeah, I can do that. Um, <clears throat> we met and discussed the options. There were people from the town. Everybody got a copy of this business yes. I put together. Um, and which was their first introduction to that, basically, except Mary Lou had one, Dick had one. But all, uh, the planning board members had one that were there. However, all of the people that were there did not. So they all got to look at it. And people had various letters they had written. Ron Fountain was one of them. Mary Lou had something she put together from the Heritage Commission. And this stuff is available to be read by anybody that wants it. It's on a television, too. Yeah. Had filmed the whole thing. Um, and so the selectmen are meeting right now to put together a letter to go out to the general public in town for the options that they have. Then they're going to bring it back to the uh, members of the planning board, and the Heritage Commission, and citizens that are involved, look this thing over, send it out, determine public hearing dates, that kind of business, and then go from there. And do the survey, put the survey out there. Was it, was it determined that the schoolhouse is not a historic building? It isn't a historic building at this point. It's already been gutted and home right. right. It doesn't qualify for a historic building per se. And it's not on the register either. So that puts us into the, the three main options that Okay, or four. Okay. We have four. Okay. Do nothing. I mean, the nothing isn't really nothing. We're going to have to do something to maintain yeah. the bathrooms, yeah. but and the heat. But anyway, just patch where it was broke. 
<coughs> just patch whatever is uh, pretty much. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Can I add a little bit to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're for sure. They're, they're going to do something similar like this. Yes. It's going to be in more detail. Yeah. And but they also insisted on a cover letter. Yeah. Instead of having it just one sheet, right. which is primary information, they wanted to add a cover letter that actually had like a little bit of a history about the townhouse. I'm sorry, the church yeah. and schoolhouse. And that's that's mostly what they wanted added to it. And that's what they're that's we're discussing right now. Yeah. So let's get the cover letter that. Well, the summary of survey at the are they gonna put it to a vote? Well what to a vote? What we're gonna do? Is that gonna be a town vote? No, they're vote? gonna to put together the options. So and then it's gonna be a town vote. Yeah, it's going out to everybody in town. Okay, so it'll be warrant on the next uh, ballot. No, it'll be um, special mail in and respond. And we're probably gonna have a coffee. Uh, Ron Fountain suggests we have a pancake breakfast to get people in to bring in their thing. And we'll probably have a couple of public hearings to, for people that have technical questions and, that, and tax questions. And yeah. So my understanding is that it's not just to be technical with your answering your question. I don't think it's a vote. The selectmen are doing, correct me if I'm wrong, the selectmen are doing a survey to gather input, and the selectmen are going to make a decision. They're writing a letter to the people tonight. But the, but the process is that the selectmen ultimately are going to make a decision about how to spend the money for this that they've got it in hand this year over there. And in the future, there'll be more articles, but it'll be asking for more money to follow up on the plan. But this, this is, in my understanding, is this is that this is not leading to a special town meeting with a no. vote. No. And this is this is a survey to inform the selectmen so that they can gauge the pulse of the people, right. and the selectmen can then make a decision. Correct. But I, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's correct to characterize it as a vote. Okay. Not a direct vote. Yeah. In the sense of, you know, like when we have a town meeting and vote on Okay, it's a survey among the townspeople so, to find out the pulse of the town. That's a better way to put it. Is, right. that, is that the right? Understanding? Yes, it is. It's not a vote like a town meeting. Yeah. But so they'll take the return surveys in under consideration when they make a decision. The selective decision as to what charge we're going to Because they have the discretion to spend the whatever the maintenance fund is, right? They can spend thirty thousand dollars this year to start work and keep the thing from falling down if that's what they decide to do based on the input from the town. Yes, yeah, so and the input from the town, no matter what you call it, if it walks like a duck and it quacks, it's a duck. It is a vote. And the majority of the people are voting on their, their opinion. I know it's just a survey of opinion. It's not a legitimate ballot, right? Oh. And the selectmen are going with what the town people say. Presumably they would, but I mean, we're They're not, not obligated. obligated. Not obligated. To answer the survey, you don't have to be a registered voter, for example, right? You don't have to be a resident. Probably. Yes, you do. Well, they're they're talking about letting people, letting people, letting people, letting people that own land here. Return service. That, that's a decision they haven't made yet. No, I understand. I'm, I mean, it's being discussed that people that yeah. people that aren't voters here right. will be able to return, will probably be able to return surveys and have them counted. Right? It's not a vote in they the may. sense. They may. It's not a vote in the sense that you know they're going to check that each person's a registered voter right. on the list and that all is correct. That. Well, the selectmen would have final determination. You know, that, that would be more of a suggestion as a state survey. That's you're right there. It's, it's, going, it's not an official ballot. Right. Now, a referendum, no. Okay. And after they send it out, they also want to have a meeting. Yes. For anybody who wants more clarification and more information can come to that meeting yep. and have it have their questions answered and to discuss it. Or more than one. one and one. also fill it out there if they want. Okay. Yep. After they answer the question. Okay. Good. That's what was done, and now we're waiting for the selectmen to finish, and when they do, we'll get back in again. And hopefully, what they want to do is get it out by the end of this month, the survey out, yeah. and then within two weeks, have the post a uh, public thing, a meeting, or hearing, if you want to call it a hearing. It's, it's uh, probably what it should be called because people are going to come in and uh, informational meeting. Yep. But, or, or people may voice objections to one thing or another. I mean, who knows? So, 
there are so many different things on the CIP that we discussed last time about cemeteries and um, various things. Uh, I haven't done anything on those. What I've done is I'm going to pass this around. Uh, I want Brad to take a look at it. I took the liberty of spending the money. If the town doesn't want to use it, I, I want to, I'm going to move that that be placed as, in as part of the working document. Just take a quick look. Your idea of the road book? Is the road? A road book. That's the road there. That's the index. And each and every page after that has its own section. That's all. Yeah. And you just place all the documentation of all the work that's General ever been maintenance, done. Maintenance information. Maintenance information, everything. There'll be a separate filing cabinet probably for receipts and documentation of work done as well, general receipts and everything in that book. But a general list of what maintenance and work has been done to those roads in what year. It's a quick reference guide so people don't have to go through filing cabinets to look back 10 or 15 years for each row. Because nobody does that. They don't waste the time, they don't have the time, and sometimes you can't find the stuff. If it's, if it's, oh, every, and I don't know who's, we got to talk about that. Whose obligation is going to be to put this in there? Should be a conjunct, I think it should be an effort among, between the selectmen and the CEO. Because the CEO is the guy that enforces it, and of course is going to do the work too, because he's the road agent, probably, except for paving. And the selectmen who are authorizing the work to be done, we're paying for it uh, with our money. They should be in charge of making sure something goes in the book between the pages for each row. Every road's in there. It's it's lineal footage is in there, where it's found on the tax map, and and that's a quick list for anybody. If, you go, if that that'll last 20 years, we might have to fix it at times. But, but I've already got all the stuff from Clark Road. I saved all that because I was very active with that with Bob Leonard and Ernie Brown when we did all the Clark Road. I've got all that information. I'm going to add that to the Clark Road section and it'll be in there. Then they did Barney Road a couple of years back. We did Moose, some stuff on Moose. If all that stuff goes in there, then they'll always know what they've done and how much they've spent. There should be an electronic archive copy of that that's also kept up in case that book disappears. Yeah, so it's and, that can be kept, just the same thing. and that can be kept securely on the website. Great idea. This is the beginning. And it's up to everybody here to help that, implement these tools, that's all. Does that include class six roads? <laughs> what? Class six roads? Yeah, everything's there. Everything in the town is there. Oh. Every single road that I know of, anyway. I think that's a fantastic idea. It is a great preference for anybody living on any road. Well, you know, when, when was this last page? I need to know. Or what was work was done where, especially if you're going to have cyclic stuff done. Yeah. Or if you're going to have any future development to know exactly where the positioning any type of uh, substructure or reinforcement would be listed. Brad likes the idea as road committee chairman, and he's supposed to show up here after supper and take a look at it. If anybody's got any great ideas, kick them in. But that was an excellent only, idea about the. These are only town accepted roads. Yes. Right? Correct. Because we don't maintain. We're not obligated right. to maintain. Uh, there's a couple others in there that are, we're not obligated to do either state roads, but I left them in there for the sake of. I didn't want to eliminate Lyford Road, which is a state road, and yeah. Wentworth Road. But. Well, you've got two other roads, Drew Fountain Road. And Curry Way. Yeah. Those shouldn't be in there. I mean, they're not in there, and they shouldn't be in there until they're accepted by the team. Well, they're in here. We can fix that. Well, should we include This is a working document right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning that right now. I didn't even realize that they were. Well, you can have them in there and have them, no have noted. them, have them noted that we're not supposed to be doing maintenance on this road yeah. because it's not accepted. And I think that then that makes it clear. It's not like, oh, we just forgot to remove the farm road. Yep. We, it's there, and we know it's there, and it's not supposed to be worked on. Also, so many times uh, in the future, uh, Class 6 may be upgraded, a private road may be converted to a public road. So if we have some type of point of reference as to any work that has been done to it uh, in the past, that would only assist the town in any future maintenance. Was that was Tumbledown Dick? How many years ago was that, I think, when they had the goof? 
How many years? Years? 15? Maybe 15 when it was class six and then Dave got a Darrow and a bunch of people from Tumbledown Dick brought it to the town meeting. And they took the town took it over then. Yeah. I don't have first of all I know what's gonna happen fifteen years down the road, but it'd be good to know what we have to start with. No, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's very good. That's fine. Excellent. Excellent. So so to second Ed's comment, I think that whether the electronic version is maintained in exactly and when this is updated something else gets updated or whether quarterly somebody scans this into a PDF and, and you know, basically fax it up as a PDF up and then we put it on the web. Then you, you know, some some you gotta have some methodology for making making sure we have a backup copy and making making it more available to people. Yeah. It's easier to just do do it electronically and you print out the page when you're done and stick it in the book. I don't know where our authority goes, but it should be, and I don't know if this needs to be voted on or what, but if we're gonna create this stuff for the town and CIP Somebody's got to designate the caretakers of these things because that's what CIP is all about anyway. It's how to enhance or improve or carry at an at a ex existing stature the town assets. So somebody's got to be in charge of doing that stuff, whether it's always going to be the planning board, that's fine. Um, is it the planning board administrator, that, administrator that's going to do this work? I don't know that we, whether we're not, we're supposed to put that up as this is what we want them to do. You know, or do we even have that authority? I don't know. But it's a selectman and the CEO that are the guys that actually make the work happen after the townspeople vote yes or no or discretionary funds are spent. Now, whether or not we're the guy, somebody's got to be put in charge of putting it on the website and putting it in this book. And they have to do it judiciously. Uh, if anything's going to add to the workload of any town employee, it should definitely be voted on and should be referred up to the Board of Selectmen for approval. That is going to increase the workload and be a required uh, effort for them. Well, agreed. So, what I think that if this were restricted to like big stuff, I think. If the big project stuff that was going to go in here, mm -hmm. I think that having somebody on the planning board be responsible for it as keeping maintaining it as a tool for us and CIP, I think that would be appropriate. If we want every time that somebody on AD's crew puts coal patch in front of my house, which is about three times a week, you know, we don't want somebody on the planning board involved in that because we're just not going to be able to keep up with that level of detail that much work, you know what I mean? I think we should set a parameter anyway of the, the, the value of work. I don't know the coal patch qualifies because that's not long-term maintenance. Hot tarring, I mean, you know, coal patch is filled a hole for the time being. I don't think that should go in here. But that's all that happens on a lot of our roads. Well, I mean, yeah, but, okay. Well, well, the, in front of my house, not that I'm complaining, but the fact is, yeah, yeah. It, it, all that's there is coal patch. I'm not arguing with you, but, but that wouldn't be put in here. <laughs> Until they eventually pave that, if they're going to pave it. Well, I understand, but I mean, part of the decision of when to pave would be, have you know, Eddie's going to be like, oh, I've got, I've got the guys up there, you know, three times a week on Stone Road, maybe, you know, doing cold patch, maybe it's time to, maybe, you know, this is that, that, that amount of maintenance is starting, you know, it's like, that's when you know that you should... The select might have to approve that, though, right? No, I understand. I'm just saying that that would be part of the input that we would need in order to say, this road before this road. Right. This one's costing us money, more money for maintenance to keep it up because it's falling apart than right. this one. This one should be prioritized first. That's what CIP is, right? Part of it. The other thing is just a chronological uh, compilation of work done. In other words, we've spent X number of dollars on this road. We've got problems here and problems there. Where have we not gotten to? Or when it comes time to fix a failure, for whatever reason, like some of that pavement is pretty thin on Garney Road, and it was done just a few years ago. Now, if you've got the information of who did the paving, what it was, it was what it cost, the whole nine yards there, at least you know the history of it, when it was done. I mean, people forget, I, I happen to have written stuff on Clark Road, or I wouldn't remember it, because I looked at it and said, oh yeah, we did that. 
oh yeah, we did that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I don't remember it. And that's what, this is great for that. You know, it's not going to tell everybody what to do next, but maybe it'll tell them where they should. So I think if the idea is it's the big stuff, then I would say some of the planning board should probably maintain that. If what, you know, it's going to be updated twice a year. It may be. The big, the big project or, or if there's two or three projects, it has to work in conjunction with a filing kit. Because in there goes each file, for every road there'll be all the receipts. The paving receipt, the, the receipt from the road agent for how much machine work he did on that road, et cetera, for that year. You can't put it all in here. But you sure can put a paper in here saying 19, 2014, road agent and nation, $5,000 worth of work on such and such a road, replacing culverts, et cetera, et cetera. Culvert bill, X number of dollars, all on that page, and that just gets put in between Burwell and Camp or wherever it belongs. And then you don't have to find it. Yeah, well, I mean, if you, well, yeah, I think you just suggested potentially a process is once a year go through and create a page for each road and say, here's what the condition is, here's what was done to it, and, that, and maybe that's it. That, you add a page a year per road. Each one of these roads will have a page every year if something has been done to it. If nothing has been done to it, I don't know. It, it, we make it, for instance, Cottle Hill Road, nobody's going to do anything there. Pleasant Valley, okay, that had work done on it. The whole list for the year would, would be, I would take the, the uh, paperwork out and whoever the administrator of this is, add to the list, and I'd say there's 2014, 2015, 2000, nothing done in those years and just put down minor maintenance, call it replaced, and just clip that paper in behind. That, that's all, you know, just, it's just so quick and easy then. Uh, well, yeah, I think this should be uh, kept up by the road agent because such issues as you were discussing, a chronic problem, may denote another additional repair need in the future. It could uh, denote uh, substrata uh, sinkage, it could denote a need for a water diversion or a culvert installation, which could be more costly and could definitely affect uh, any road repairs in the future. And who would know better than the road agent exactly what's happening out there on day? I only disagree with that. I only disagree with that, absolutely. The road agent should not be in charge of maintaining this record. He should be in charge of submitting the information that goes in here. Yep. But in terms of who, may, who keeps this organized, that's putting an awful lot on the road agent. And also, the road agent has, not particularly this one, any road agent, has a fiduciary interest. A personal fiduciary interest. No one with a fiduciary interest should be in charge of this book or these what kind of records. Way have a fiduciary interest? They make money from work done at that particular piece of a project. Anything a road agent done for, he bills for. He's, he's making his hourly wage for normal repair, but he's not making. He's not like making a side deal for the future repair. This, I'm not arguing any of those points. I'm telling you the propriety of public business. The people with fiduciary responsibility of involvement are not supposed to maintain the books unless they're elected officials and the extent of their fiduciary involvement is carrying out public projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ed is not in that position. Well, I, I, I would argue that Whoever the guy the is. It may not be Ed in three years. Well, the fiduciary responsibility, I would argue, because he's an employee of the town, set to repair. He makes nothing more than his hourly wage. To, to keep a list of, of the ongoing problems with the road, nobody has better hand-on-hand -hand contact. Fine, he gets to submit I'm, I'm that saying. from himself okay. to whoever's in charge of this book. Mm -hmm. And that person is the one that puts it in this book and maintains the book. Because that information has to be made available to the selectmen, et cetera. But as a quick reference guide, his input would be crucial to anything in there. And to take, a, to take a quick note, okay, uh, six times out on, uh, Moose Mountain Road for repair at 231. That's fine. That, that kind of thing, I mean, that's if it belongs that's in this great. book, great. What I'm trying to tell you is, Garney Road went $40,000 over budget mm -hmm. because nobody was watching it. Period. You know what a chunk of money that is? Oh, that's a, that, okay. It's 20%, 25%. That's absolutely unreasonable. 
And I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong. I'm just saying it was not managed, period. Because whoever was managing it did not understand what the, the nature of the job was, the extent of the job, and they didn't get it done the way it should have been done. And I'm not blaming Ed or Sunday River. I don't care. 25% is absolutely absurd. How long would anybody be in business if their estimating skills could only come within 25%, unless it was always 25% to the favorable? Then they'd make an extra couple of hundred thousand a year. That would be nice. But all I'm saying is those things can be prevented absolutely all of the time. Not when you're in the big dig because everybody gets paid off down there, but not here because everybody can scrutinize everything. Well, let's just say this isn't a, a, uh, an ask for a quote or a bid. This is a note reference for, for those who are going to make that decision. The road agent is going to make that decision. The board of select and the planning board. All other boards and elected officials involved will be making that decision. If he has his notes that he sees a, a recurring problem in a certain area. Supply of person that, charges of both. But, but you get too many fingers in the pie. But in my experience with municipalities, you get too many fingers in the pie, you lose information every step of the way. Now, you see, that's, that's the, the, way the, the way municipalities work, Jim, and I've been involved with a lot of the big ones, and they don't do it that way. They precisely do not do it the way the people that execute the work hand it to the town engineer. And the town engineers that organize the budget and the construction projects that they have, the road agents go out and do are the ones that manage this part of it. The road agents never manage this period, ever. Never anywhere. And they shouldn't be doing it here. It's not acceptable in the public interest. They want to supply information that goes into this? Fine. They are not in charge of the book. It's the way it is. Then we should have a short line, a short line involved with it. We shouldn't have uh, this one passed the road agent passes it to the selectman, or passes it to the secretary, or passes it to. I, I don't um, argue this point anymore. You know, it, 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 there, there, is, there is where the confusion. There is not going to be any confusion. This is too simple and too small a town. Anyway, go ahead. So, so I'm going to research to see if there's any software that's available that we could use to supplement this book because it should be very easy for the small town we are to that electronic form of that which would show everything. I mean, the GIS mapping we have, we, we would have all of our culverts, everything. Not only the road, you'd be able to update them, print them out, put it in the book, update it, print it out in the book, but maybe already available for us. And I'd be have you seen them? I have that book in here, that big long binder with all the roads and the maps that yes. I got all the measurements for, on this page for the length of the roads to the nearest foot. And uh, that's one source. And I'm sure that's electronic, which it might be a place to start. I don't know. The maps look like Google Maps. Yeah. And there's there's data layers for each thing, and it would show but, because we have to start looking to the future a little bit. You know, we keep we shouldn't should we should have a book as a backup, but people are going to want that electronic. Who wants to do that? Uh, first research. I, I would like to research and find out if that software is available to us, and I think it might be. Well, take a look and see what you see. Rob, if you know anything, you're, in, you're really invested in that area of the world. I mean. Well, I don't do GIS. I try to avoid doing GIS. Um, I get it. But this is really, I mean, it's fascinating how much information you can store there, but it's, um, anyway, it's not, it's not, that's not area. But I think that it would, well, if we went with a GIS solution, it's a simple GIS. If we went with a GIS solution, I am sure that we can actually attach our information that we want to put in the book to those layer, either as additional layers or attached to those layers, and basically attach, say, okay, well, actually, there's a road, there's a object, GIS object that's the road, and we can say we work from here to here, and, we, and you will click here, you can click here to see here's here are, here's the work that was done, here's all the bills, here's who did it, and, you know, and, and it's all just as PDFs that are that are you click and it pops up, right? I mean, that, that's all. Doable. I just don't know what it costs us to buy the software. Well, I'll find that out because I believe we probably can. Well, we need, a, we need an electronic record. And yeah. I, yeah. I think that could be designed in any way. This is simple state. stuff. She works for the state. Yeah. That's, that's, that's this is relatively simple stuff. Mm -hmm. We could design something if we needed to, if nothing's available out there. Because we don't want to get the, the ultra complex to do a simple job anyway. I want to hear Brad's input on this. Now, that's a guy who runs a road committee, who's invested in this. 
I'd like to hear how he feels management of this time. He likes this idea. He loves it. He wanted it once before, and he was shut down. Well, that's again, I'm just adding to it. That's, that wasn't involved. I'll show up, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> I don't know who it was. I just took one. I don't know that's right. It wasn't any, I, I didn't recognize the number. You drive the, drive the uh, ambulance or something. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah. Do that around me. Campaign. Just don't call on. Mr. Chairman, did we ever have a book like that? Or no. This is the first time we ever had it. We never had a book we like that. We talked about this, so this is a this is a great record. Just a, we just a reference on it. Done repair is Perfect. Well, it, it's really great if you want to go in and see what we've done. Let's say we got a culvert problem on his rubber book. Has anybody ever repaired that culvert before? Oh, not really. We did four other culverts on that road. The information's all there. It's time for that one. Nobody's ever paved in front of Rob Collins' house or Hoover's. You know, it's yeah. immediate. Now, what about culvert, culvert assessments? Do we go out and inspect the culverts? That's the road agent's job. I know, but that information could be easily put in there since it's... That's yeah, it's part of CIPs. I know in the last year or so, he had his crew find and paint. And you see the little yellow stripes at the two edges of the road, where all the culverts are in town. Oh, okay. And he actually, I, I think a couple months ago, I heard him mentioning something, oh yeah, I found another culvert. I mean, there's it's still a covering. But yeah. There's a lot of them, right? We have a lot of water moving around in our town. There's the a lot of culverts. The state there. wants to know where all those culverts are. So, so I think that Eddie, just so that he and his crew knew where they were, so, so they were aware of when they were doing the work and doing the plowing and everything else. They went and marked them all. Um, I should have brought the book with the maps. It's great because it has every road and the maps are on it. It's a big long binder like so you've seen it. I had it here once before. And it's nice because it shows the culverts we know about and everything. That should be in conjunction with this. And every culvert you find you can easily mark on this map. I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me. But I can bring it next trip. Um, instead of going home and getting it. But that would be great, you know, because this all stuff should be together with it. We have no source of information. I didn't even stop. I watched the town vote $130,000 for this road, $100,000 for that road, and they voted, and somebody went and did the work. And a couple of years later, people said, well, yeah, we paved that road. Nobody remembers what. Yeah, we did. The, and we remember vaguely what they did, but maybe a little more so than vaguely, but nobody else had to have it right there. So 100 years from now, that's going to be our legacy. 100 years ago, 20 years from now, when we're not here, or 25, somebody will say, well, we've got a choice between paving two roads. And they'll look through this and say, well, this road was done in 2015. And it's 2026. But this road wasn't done since 2008. And it's about the same condition. Yeah, I mean, that's what you can use it for. Yeah. And you can make your projections on CIP once you've got this data compiled. And, and here's what where you can put your CIP projections right in here. It's just a place to launch it from that you can't do it any other way. I don't think, yeah. You have to remember, up until the year 2000, there was no selectman office, there was no tax collector's office. Everything was done in their homes. 2000? Yep. 2000. This guy built and initiated this building in 2000. The only office that we had was Jenny's office across the hallway from the, from the kitchen. I built an office for the tax collector in my basement. People would come in and get a cup of coffee and sit at my kitchen table and pay their, tax. pay their taxes. <laughs> We've had an instance just recently about taxing a graveyard in a town. And the guy finally, we, we reached him, and he came up with a letter written by Selectman Jim Whittemore in 1970 that said, there will be no more taxes collected on your property. But there's no minutes of a meeting, and it's only signed by Jim. One Selectman. You can't do things unilaterally. You have to have two signatures. And Craig has no archives of the minutes of the meeting that this may have been decided upon by the three selectmen. So, letter is useless. 
Well, in the year 2255, <laughs> they're watching you say that. So it's, well, we have a vault. We do have a vault. Oh, right? yeah. We have archives, but if there's wrong information or no information yep. is in, there you go. That's why this should work. That's important. The information is there. The big question is going to be, who keeps it? It could be a charge to the planning board. It could be a charge to the planning board. Could be, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, which means to one of two things. Either the chairman, vice chairman, administrator, or a, one of the planning board members assumes that responsibility. I mean, that's what we get into this for. It's a little bit of self-government, right? Right. Yeah, you got to donate some of your time to it or why come. Right. <clears throat> so I think that we would, whoever was responsible for that probably should attend the, the road committee meetings if they ever meet. You know, I'll just, attend to this. Just, I mean, just, you know, just, just to, you know, as a sort of our, our organization, right, the person's going to be maintaining that should be hooked into the roads, road people, right? And if you either let them, the road committee maintain that, and we have somebody who makes sure they do, or we maintain it, and we have somebody who's hooked in with the road committee to get the information and stay aware of what projects are, there are so that they know what to put in. I expect it to help set this up and give it legs anyway. Yeah. Because I've, I've done this kind of stuff. That's how I, when I, whenever I, not anymore, but when I had a lot of stuff going on in business years ago, I'd organize things this way because it's easy. And there was no computers then. There's no such thing. But they had Tandy 1000 was the state of the art. And they played video games on it or something. But, so everything was hard copy. You don't even know what a Tandy 1000 was. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The road committee, who's the road committee? Brad Williamson, yeah. I'm on the road right. committee. Right, but who is the road committee? Not listed in here. No, and it should be. Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we get that correct? Well, how do we get the road committee? It was formed the very year we did Garney Road, Clark Road. That year, Ernie Brown chaired the road committee. It was formed at that town meeting to supervise the 100... I, I don't think there was ever a town meeting that authorized it. No, it authorized the money to be spent. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's just a committee of four by the select, right? It's just a selectman's But I, I would assume so, but it's, it's not a qualified committee. It should be assigned. Or it should it be, would be listed here. What Ernie, elected. what Ernie did at that meeting was say, we're going to form a road committee and ask for anybody that wanted to volunteer. And there was, and so we had a meeting in this building and it was Brad, um, Bob Leonard, myself. Um, Let's see, there's no accountability. Well, well it's when you guys meet and somebody takes minutes, right? Well, we're not official committee. There's no minutes. This, this is my point. It's who, who is the road committee? It's not an official committee. No. Then we don't but you're responsible for advising the selectmen as to how they want to spend the town money. So something should be changed. Yes, agreed. The road committee should take on some kind of <coughs> life right. that's legitimate and legal. What was the last time it met? Six months ago. <laughs> Is it a subset of the selectmen or a subset of the plan? It's a subset of Ernie Brown's gathering to figure out how we were going to go about finishing Clark Road. And it never became anything more than that. <coughs> What's always an adolescent? The answer is neither. An infant. Now, now last year, report, road committee. No report. Yeah. So that's what brings the there's no the coffee <clears throat> below the cream is that it's a useless committee officially. Yes. They do good work when they do the work, but it's not an official committee. You know, I, and I'm not a hundred percent sure Brad wants it to become a real official committee. You know what that kind of connotes more work. If you become an official committee, then if and you're the head of the committee. Is, then you've got more work to do, and I'm not blaming him for that at all. So, so I think from the position of state law, if there's no minutes, there's no notice of meetings, there's no any of the stuff that 91A requires, that doesn't exist. That's right. It has to not exist. We can make it exist. If it, right? it, no. if, if it, if it exists, then it's all illegal. We can make it exist is my point. I think the selectmen should be exist. I mean, it should be a committee formed by the selectmen, I believe. Yep. They can delegate it off under the planning board if they want. And then the, when there's minutes, they are basically part of the selectmen, you know, 
four, right? If they're, they're going to go into selectman's binder, probably, rather than, I mean, unless they have their own binder, but I mean, it's not. Uh, <coughs> the minutes, there has to be minutes. Has to, if the minutes have to go someplace, they should report to somebody, I think the selectman probably, um, unless the selectman wanted to report to the planning board as part of CIP. I think the planning board should be in charge of this personally, for the time being, until somebody wants to change that. Planning board in charge of the record. I want to be in charge of it for a little while. I, I don't necessarily want the work. The road committee is the data to us. The board. Uh, yeah, they've seen support of it. But they don't exist. Remember? Minutes of the road committee. Maybe it does exist. Huh? Minutes of the road committee. It's there. Well, I'm any, any bets on what the most recent minutes in there are? <laughs> <laughs> Last meeting, May 29th, 2012. Not too bad. It's only a year. And apparently, uh, the selectmen I don't know if this is pulled out of the selectmen's minutes or not. Apparently, it's a separate committee, but uh, there's a selectman that sits on it. Who's that? Who was that? Sitting on it? Zacher. And he made a motion to appoint Ernie Brown as a member at large of the road committee. Ernie started the road committee. I'm surprised he wasn't still on it. Well, you know, this, it, there's too many loose ends here. Yeah. And normally, a committee, if it can, well, I don't think that it can be an autonomous thing. It probably has to be under the auspices of some existing thing like the Select North Planning Board or something. Should be some body. Yeah, that body should be appointing members, not yeah, it's it's Well, can, can I say this? I think a good place for us to sit right now, because we're creating this. Yeah. And I, I'm, I know what to do to organize this, I really do. And make it work well, is put in charge, of, put the Planning Board in charge of it for now, until it's an entity. Once it's an entity and it's got a life of its own and doesn't need anything but the system's working and everybody that wants to know what the system is, then it can go where it's going to go or stay with the planning board and have either the administrator and one of the members or somebody do this stuff. So if the planning board maintains this as part of CIP, it's a good idea. Should the road committee be a subcommittee of the planning board? I don't know. We're working in conjunction with various committees for this um, building restoration. I don't see why it can't be the road committee in concert with whoever the build the building inspector and road agent, planning board. I mean, not necessarily they'll have to sit together and powwow all the time, but they all have their particular contribution. Can we appoint it, or does the selectman? Like well, the planning board assumes this. We're going to take it and do it. It yeah. doesn't matter which member does it. It's among us who determines that. And the selectmen are going to determine how they want the information if they want the planning board and the road committee and the road agent. That's what they're in charge of saying, I want the three of them to do it together. Fine. But Rick's not here. Yeah. And it's too bad. You know? because he's doing that other thing. Well, the first meeting was May of 2003. That's when we did Clark Road. Probably. Clark Road has some cracks. Yeah. Lots of them. Millions, trillions. Is that it? was all alligator. Ernie. Evening. Hi, right, there's a man. He knows all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're, road, we're doing road committee things here. Road. Okay. We're getting into it. Good. Is there a We're reminiscing about that night, 2003. Good. Mm. Sorry to bother you. You're busy doing something. I was just doing real estate work, right? True. Yeah. We're making it, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt the the road book format that we've got there as a, as a part of our CIP effort and that we as the planning board maintain the information in that book. 
Any discussion on that? Anybody want to take the course to read that? No, well, yeah. One thing I'd ask yeah. under that, if it's under this board, uh, will the road agent have to come and hand it to the board for normal, for regular reports? Uh, I'm not <coughs> stipulating any. Uh, I think no, that, no, just asking if that's how. how uh, I think that I think that the chairman was going to have to make sure that somebody, either he, the administrative assistant, some member of the board, had finds the information one way or another to put it in the book every year. That's what that's what I have in mind. Is that it happens somehow, and we figure. I mean, chairman can figure that out as we go along. I guess. Anything else? Read the motion. Uh, yes. Um, Please. Rob Collins, Rob Collins had a motion to adopt the road book format as a part of the CAP effort and that the planning board maintain it. Seconded by uh, Mr. Lefton. No more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's not a piece of it. Certainly, me either. I move that we have the chairman request the selectmen to feed us information on the roads and from any information that the road committee submits to our record. You move that the selectmen that the planning board through the chairman ask the selectmen to submit to us any information on the roads and any new information that the road committee develops so that we can put it in the record. We just want to be fed the information. Not to interrupt your motion, but we really don't have a legitimate road committee. We're still at that. And I, that's, I think that's why he's asking for the, to talk to the selectmen rather than the road committee, right? When it's, oh, the road well, committee doesn't really ask the selectmen to form a road committee. Or a just, legitimate one. If I said, you're, it's, yeah. if well, any information the selectmen have, send it to us. Right, that that's, that's, that's what I want to request, any information they have. But to change the motion a little, I would ask the selectmen to form a road committee with the intention of feeding us the information so we can maintain it for CIP. I like that. That's so second no. Anything else on that? Now that would set up the formal process of right. no, no further rules. Well, it just gets it. Yeah. Apparently Tom Hill is on the committee too. It may have been. He was 21st. Well, he's the one that's doing the minutes in 2011. Pardon me? He's the one that's writing the minutes. Oh, oh I thought you were saying 2011. way back in 2003. I was, no, no, he was no, in no. town. He, he Pickham was still here. Bill Nelson, Brad Williamson, and Tom. And we had a second. Read the motion again. We had a first and second. Okay. Um, Rick Charette made a motion that the, that the planning board through the chairman request that the selectmen and road committee submit info concerning roads for inclusion into the uh, road book and that the selectmen select a road committee for the submission of this information. Seconded by uh, Rob Collins. That's it. Can, can I ask you to trim it a little bit? Yes. Because I think it could be trimmed a bit. That's true. So, so we get to so we get to the point the selectmen. Yeah, ask the selectmen to appoint a road committee. Go to the first part. Um, that the planning board, through the chairman, request the selectmen and road committee submit information concerning roads. For inclusion into the road book. Could you amend that? Yep. Yeah. It's shorter. One second, shorter. Right. We ask the selectmen to form a road committee. Did you withdraw the first part and just change it around? We'll draw the first part and yeah, make the amendment. All right. I will throw the whole motion. Let's um, rebuild the motion. Go ahead. Okay, the motion to ask the selectmen to form a road committee. First part. Second part, to ask the selectmen to feed the planning board information on roads, old and new developing information that 
we could maintain in our roadblock as part of CIP. Okay. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So we got some good stuff. We got our book. And we'll get the selecting and get the information coming out. <coughs> Construction of a real road. Okay. okay. We'll work on this. That makes the IP easy. Well, it, 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 it's a place, it's some place to do it, is the whole point. If we want to know who's holding all the hot bats, we just go on the book. Yeah, we, we, we just don't have any place to do it yet. Right. Except some kind of papers that say something, and that's what all the towns have. I should have brought them in here, stack them that thick. And some, some of them say so little in so much paper, and they're so useless. Because nobody invented a, 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 a tool. And then there's some good tools out there too, but a lot more for big cities. And we're not this. Is a good tool. It's, 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 it's some easy, simple easy to do. Yeah. We're going to adjust the format and how we lay yep. it out as we go along, but it, we, it needs to be there. There's no doubt about that. Okay. I don't know that we can go any further on this tonight. I think we kind of did. We're going to get the selectmen to do their thing. I don't think we're actually up. Okay, member comments. We're going to move on. Member comments? Yeah. So I'm not a member, but I think somebody who's a member should look at this. I, th I think we can all agree. I mean, code have you seen point. this? No. Nope. No, I'm going to take a look at it. I think you should. I'm going to look at it. A after, though, not during the meeting. Right. Uh, Mr. Palmer. Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't have enough, too. Good. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, yeah. Dick, Dick has an altered. I know we all count on him for his uh, knowledge and you know his wherewithal with the town. I think he should have a chance to speak if asked. I don't know who. He's I really do. speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Even as an alternate. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I guess that's it. Let's adjourn. Thank you all. I really have a I'm not doing it for that. No, no, that is good stuff. I don't get it.